Berkeley, California capitalized on people power to become the first U.S. city to pass a sugary drink tax to counteract the drink industry's millions spent on targeting Latino and other kids and fund health programs. Big soda is huge. It's a huge industry. They will stop at nothing. They will say anything to protect their profits. But, you know, what we learned in Berkeley is that just a group of committed people working together can marshal their resources, their own personal energy, and be able to defeat Big Soda. How'd they start? In February 2014, they created Berkeley versus Big Soda, a coalition of local groups, researchers, schools, healthcare providers, and parents. All of us came together and said, well, what can we do about this? And disrupting the power of the industry's marketing to our kids through a fund that we could generate locally was the answer that we came up with. They believed a local one cent per ounce tax on sugary drinks could fund health programs. They researched failed sugary drink taxes and spoke with advocates across the country. They brought the tax idea to the city council, who heard enough support to add it to the November 2014 ballot as Measure D. So the Measure D campaign knew we couldn't counteract the soda companies with the money that they were spending, but we could counteract it with our people power. And so we stepped up and we um, trained volunteers in our measure. We asked them to go door to door. Latino leaders stepped up as spokespeople to talk with media and newspapers and on TV. But there were critics. Some worried about business owners, others opposed tax revenue feeding the city's general fund. The industry's representatives were coming in and saying, oh, this, is, this money's going to the general fund, trying to drive a wedge of distrust and build distrust amongst our council members. It was a lot harder for them because, one, we had everyone on board, all the electeds and the camp people that were running for office were on board, but more than that, we had talked about this panel of experts that would be formed that would advise the city on how to spend the resources most effectively. 76% of residents approved Measure D on November 4, 2014, despite the $2.3 million the beverage industry spent to oppose it. A penny per ounce tax is now levied on distribution companies that contract with makers of sugar-sweetened beverages like soda, energy drinks, juice with added sugar, etc. The tax is not on Berkeley consumers or retailers. Soda tax, now that it's passed, I believe that it definitely raised more awareness, specifically in the Latino and African American communities. They are now more aware um, and just reminded about the importance of eating healthy and um, how dangerous and um, you know bad it is to consume soda and so on. The soda tax drew $116,000 in revenue in its first month. The new Sugar Sweetened Beverage Product Panel of Experts, which will allocate revenues, started meeting in May 2015. The City Council even voted to advance the group $500,000 to give to things like school cooking and gardening programs, healthy food access programs, clinic and faith-based nutrition education, and more. From the beginning, it's always been about educating our children and again, disrupting the system that they're growing up in where it's normal that adults, especially adults of color, get preventable chronic diseases um, due to the overconsumption of sugary drinks. The whole reason that we did this is because we want kids to live long, healthy lives that are not going to be marred by type 2 diabetes or obesity. This policy win um, shows the rest of the country that other cities might be able to take this on too.